from this to this in three days in my shed at home. Stripping, sanding, painting, welding, noise deadening, new bar work and an engine overhaul. This is probably the biggest, most hands-on ground up rebuilds I've ever attempted. Just wait until you see the final result. Ooh, wow, would you have a look at that, eh? This is a very exciting episode because this isn't any old 80 series, this is Sooty Mark II. And as you can see, it's looking pretty darn fresh. That's because we've just been raptor coating it. It looks amazing. And we didn't start here, of course, there's been a fair bit of prep to get into this, but the really cool thing about this episode is not the fact that you're just gonna see Sooty in its absolute prime glory state. You're gonna learn a lot of tips and tricks to do a job like this on your own vehicle, whether you're raptor coating some bar work or you wanna do the whole vehicle like I'm doing. You're gonna get a stack of tips and tricks so you can do it under your own shed, in a garage, pretty much anywhere outside you can do raptor coating. And it's easy enough that I can do it as well. So if you don't mind me, I'm gonna suit back up and get back into it because we've got a fair bit of work to go. Well, this is quite an exciting step in the build because so far we've done nothing but strip the vehicle down. We've taken the engine, the gearbox out. We've pulled it all apart, we've pulled Sooty down. We can start putting the vehicle back together. But first, there's a few more things we need to take out, like the tail lights and get it all prepped so we can start sanding. And then we can give this a lick of paint. And I'll tell you what, it's gonna come up an absolute treat. Very excited about this one. You can see this as well, I've got the bar work here. This is all the bar work off Sooty. We've modified this front bar slightly. Um, we're gonna give the bar work just a much needed coat of Raptor because as you can see, it's had a hard, hard life. And um, by the end of the next couple of days, everything you see behind me is gonna look absolutely mint. And that's when the process of this build really starts to take shape. We can start putting it all back together and it's gonna start looking like a sooty. I can't wait. Now let's get into it. Like I've said before, it's always better to get some mates around to help on the big jobs like this. So I've got two of the fellas from Raptor to come around and give me a hand, Damo and Wazza. And that's the beauty of this company. They know their stuff, having worked in the industry for years. These windows are coming out now. Of course you could mask them up, but I've actually got a little modification that's going right in here. Some of you guys might know what it is, but it's a really cool little addition to um, wagons in my opinion. Maybe some struts, maybe something really cool. I don't know, we'll see, but we'll take those windows out. It's gonna make life easier, plus they're gonna come out anyway. It's a big job to respray our four wheel drive. The key is in the prep work which means removing anything that will interfere with painting every part of the panel from flares, trim, right through the nuts in the engine bay. A good little tip that I got off Damien was to just, you go into the effort to take the vehicle apart, you may as well take these door handles out. Now the reason why, so you can get the paint right up into here as well, so you don't have those harsh edges. So just another sort of 20 minutes work, just get all the door handles, door trims off, and just, uh, we're going this far, we'll do it properly. So we're going to actually paint inside this engine bay as well. We're this far, we may as well give that a go. But what I'm doing, everything I take off, I'm basically putting the bolts back into the holes because when we wrap the coat, this, but yeah, but I don't want to wrap the coat inside any threaded areas. So you want to put the bolts back in that way, that when you spray over it, um, the bolt is protecting that thread so you don't get a coarse layer of paint in through there. We're just inspecting the tailgates of um, the other body and it turns out that Sooty has a straighter panel than the donor body. Now, <laughs> I'm just as amazed as you are. So we're going to actually take this off Sooty and um, we're going to use this one. So, that's exciting. Righto, a day later and we've stripped Sooty back to bare bones. Now, it's time to sand back the panels. We start off with first using the sander to do the bulk of the work. Once that's done, we move on to sanding the more intricate, hard to get to places by hand. Well, it's not exactly hard work, it's just quite time consuming to sand the vehicle back. There's so much sanding and everything's in the prep. So you need to sand the full vehicle down. Then we've got to start on the bar work. We've got to sand all the bar work down. Tell you what, the spray painting is the easy bit of the job, believe it or not. Once you do all the prep, that's the hard bit. 
And um, look, it really helps. If you've got a couple of mates, you maybe can persuade with a few cold beers to come down, give you a hand, because the more hands on deck, the easier. Taking out the rear window, we've found some rust hidden under the trim. With a grinder, sandpaper, and some gentle persuasion, we remove as much of the rust as possible. But let's be honest, if this is the only rust in a 30-year-old body, well, we've done pretty well. Now that all the rust, all, most of the rust is all grinded out, so now we want to try and treat this rust. So we're going to use some epoxy Brunox. Now it's a rust stop and also a primer. So Jocko uses this stuff a lot on a lot of his um, vehicles. I'm just going to give this a little bit of coat here before we get right into it. It's going to stop the rust, that's the key with this. And it's nice and easy to apply. That's pretty cool if you ask me. A little bit of bog will go in there, a little bit of filler, just to um, fill that out and then it'll all be absolutely Mickey Mouse. Then we're nearly ready where we can actually paint this vehicle, which is exciting. Damien's just put a bit of filler in this little tiny dint. There was just a really little dint there. The way Damien just works with that filler, I'll tell you what, you can tell straight away that I didn't do that because that looks like a work of art. That'll be easy to sand back and will look mint. If I did it, we'd be here all day trying to sand that back. Now, Damien's a bit of a wizard and hasn't stopped there, leaving no imperfections untouched. Not 100% happy with Sooty's tailgate, he's bogged a few dings up with filler, sanded it back, and once we get it raptor coated, it'll look like a new one. All right, bit of an update. We're getting to the serious end of um, painting this vehicle, so looking forward to when we start laying the raptor coating down on it, but at the moment, all the sanding's pretty much been done. Any sort of bog work, rust repairs, all sort of been done. We're gonna push the vehicle forward. We're gonna hit it with a bit of water, give it a good clean down, get some of that dust off. And at the same time, we'll chuck some um, plastic down here on my sort of garage floor so it doesn't get too dirty when we do paint it. It's looking pretty bare bones at the moment, but trust me when I say this, the Raptor, as soon as that's applied, it's gonna start looking like a sooty. Righto, now that's all the prep done, tomorrow we're ready to Raptor coat sooty. After two decades of four-wheel driving and well over a thousand different recoveries, I've never really found a recovery kit that has everything I need in the one kit. So I've decided to make my own. Now what you're gonna find with this recovery kit, it's everything you need and nothing you don't. So you can perform basically any off-road recovery safely and easily. What you're gonna find inside this recovery bag is a tree trunk protector. Now, I've always found this style of tree trunk protector to work the best. It is simple, but it does work. Snatch strap. Now, I've used kinetic ropes and all sorts of stuff, but nothing beats the original snatch strap. I find these packed down better, and because they stretch up to 20%, the length of these, they're really effective of safely getting someone out of strife. On the other side, there's another compartment. Now, what you're gonna find in here is a winch extension strap. Now, I've decided to go for one made out of a synthetic rope, because just like your winch rope, I find it works an absolute treat, packs down, it's very lightweight as well. Now, instead of the regular steel shackles, these ones here are soft shackles. I reckon they're a heck of a lot safer, they're lighter, and they work a treat. Um, what you don't normally find in a recovery kit, they're usually a lot of money, and an extra additional thing you've got to buy is a um, winch ring. Now, it comes as part of the kit, because I think these are essential. They're essential if you're really stuck, you need to do a double line pull, or you want to change up the angle of your recovery. So, with this kit, you can basically do anything you need off-road, it'll get you out of strife. But it doesn't just stop there, because this bag, uh, it's a canvas heavy duty bag, but turn it inside out, you'll see it's got red PVC. Now that actually doubles up as a safety blanket, because as you know, um, when you're off road, you gotta keep, especially when you're dealing with recoveries, keep everything safe. Now this going over the winch rope, especially when you've got a bit of gear in here, will make a really good winch dampener. Now another little thing that we've thought about, because we've done countless of recoveries, is we usually find that the winch blanket slides down the winch rope. Not with this one, because we've put a little lanyard in here. So this little lanyard with Velcro can just go right up near the shackle, near your tree trunk protector, and even if you're on a real big steep hill, which is usually the case when you're winching, that's never gonna slide back down towards the winch. Because the recovery bag is made out of a super double-stitched heavy-duty canvas, you know it's gonna survive any punishment you care to give it. So if you're after the ultimate recovery kit, in my opinion, you can get it right now at fullwheeldrive247.com. As you can see, old Sooty behind me 
looking very fresh. It's all been sanded back, of course. We've cleaned it up, used some um, wax and grease remover, given it a really good clean. Taped up basically everything we don't want to paint with Raptor. And um, I thought just before we spray it, I'll go over just a couple of things about what we're gonna do and how we're gonna do it, because I guarantee a lot of you guys will have questions, and this might answer everything you need to know. So firstly, how much wrapped up to do a vehicle like this? We're gonna allow for about eight bottles or so, so that's two um, boxes of Raptor. We're also tinting this one as well. That's the beauty about Raptor as well. You don't just get it in black or white. You can tint it to any color you want. Now, I was lucky enough to go down to a paint shop, an automotive paint shop, and get a gray color that I really like. It's slightly darker than the original sooty that we're gonna paint, and I think it looks absolutely superb. We've already done the inside of the bonnet already, just to sort of have a bit of a practice run and uh, make sure it was good. It looks absolutely mint. So we're gonna use that. Now, to do that, of course, we, um, grab some automotive paint, we mix it up. Um, Raptor comes with the hardener as well. We mix all that together and we're actually gonna thin it out as well. So we're gonna use um, a bit of thinner to go down about 15% or so to get a nice light texture. As you know, Raptor comes usually quite a textured finish and that's what I'll have on the bar work when I do it all in black. But for the body, we're gonna just texture it down a little bit so it's a little bit smoother. Um, it's still gonna be quite coarse and obviously the main thing about it is we want it to be tough as well. This vehicle's gonna be used hard out in the bush so we need to make sure it's nice and tough and that's why, again, we're going for Raptor. So now before we get into mixing all the paint up and spraying the vehicle, you'll see right here we've got an epoxy primer. Now, Raptor, you don't really need to prime the vehicle first or any anything you're using Raptor on, really, except for this vehicle, we're gonna do that because it, has, it does have a bit of bare metal showing and also it's had a couple of paint jobs in its previous life. There's a few repairs, as you can see, so to seal it all together properly, we're gonna use a primer. Then, of course, we're gonna use the Raptor coating to give it the nice finish, so let's get into it. Now before I could grab the gun, Was has jumped onto it and has got started. I've taught him all I know, so Sooty's in good hands. So he was, uh, he's obviously learned a couple of things off me. Doing really well here, just that natural stroke. That's what you're really after. It's all in the wrist, eh? most things in life are in the wrist actually. Yeah, normally I'd obviously be lead uh, spray painting, but Was is just having a go here and uh, I'll, I'll do the next coat, <laughs> probably. All right, now we're gonna tint some of the Raptor coating. Now, a lot of you guys ask about tinting, about choosing the, your own color when you're Raptor coating. Um, so we thought we'd do a bit of a live demonstration so you can see just how easy it is. Now, what I've got here is I've got the hardener, comes in the pack here, also comes with this handy little cup here where it says fill line. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna put the hardener up to the fill line. It makes it really easy. Okay, the next step, of course, is to open up your bottle of tinnable Raptor this hardener goes into here. Righto. Now there's a little gap at the top here, so that's so you can put the lid back on and give it a shake. Shake it like it owes your money. Now I suggest, when you go in and get your colour paint from the automotive paint shop, make sure you get a couple of these. These are really handy for mixing all your paint in. We're just gonna pour this one straight into here. Now, we're gonna mix in uh, the coloured paint that we're tinting this with, with which is a grey. All right, this makes it really handy. 10 to one, we're adding 10% of this grey coloured paint. Give it a bit of a stir. All right, that's looking pretty good now. Now we're gonna thin it out because we want a different texture. We don't want it as coarse as you normally find with Raptor. We wanna just, just for the body, we're gonna thin it down a little bit. So, open this one up. And we're going to go 15% reduce up or thinners. That's what we call this one. Give that a nice little stir. And then she's ready to spray. It is pretty easy, really. And that is tinnable Raptor, just like that. We've got it in the colour we want, and we've thinned it out to the texture we want. And now, all that's left to do is to spray it on sooty. And another thing you'll notice is 
especially on this panel actually behind me, there's a few spots where you'll see darker patches of the Raptor and lighter patches of the Raptor mixed together. Now that's where I've actually held the gun a little bit too close and then a little bit too far away. So you've got wet patches and uh, thicker application in certain spots. So it's not the ideal finish, but the good news is you can touch that up. When you wait for your second coat, come back, actually hold the gun a bit further and give that a light spray and um, you'll put a nice uniform coat on there and that'll be the one to finish it off. So even still though, in saying that, you know, for somebody who's an amateur at using a spray gun, this is coming up pretty good. Now my mate Jesse has also been working on a side project for me. Let's go see what he's been up to. Beautiful sunny weekend here in the Gold Coast. Way too wet to go wheeling, so uh, we're doing some modifications. Um, Shauno's doing a Mark II of the sooty, so uh, we're doing a bit of work on his bar. The uh, same, it's going to be the same bar, just a few mods. This, where the winch used to mount, used to mount flat here, and uh, this plate got all bent. I've already belt it flat, so we're going to change it this time. This, um, this used to be the front of the bar, just a thin bit of three, four mil sits up there. Obviously, only the fair lead mounts on that. And you used to mount there, but that was bent up, so we're going to do away with that. And I've made up this new plate, went to the laser cutters. No, I didn't actually go to the laser cutter, this is a good little backyard trick for everyone. Obviously I um, marked it all out. Marked it all out, and how do you get this? So I've just, all I've done is hole sawed these two ends, you can see that. Hole sawed that, and then just run the grinder along there and there. And you get a nice little hole, so this is a thick bit of 10 mil plate here. And this is going to go on here like so. It's going to go on there, so you get the rough idea, which is going to mount up there like a normal bar. Uh, obviously, because it's the Toyota, it's going to need to be lots of winching done, so you need to make sure the winch plate is very strong. And this plate is going to sit hard on the old winch plate, so it can't bend on the bottom. And obviously, we'll put a bit of a gusset on the top. So, you get a rough idea of what's going on there. Keep you updated. All of my carport at home. I'm in the middle of building a shed, but just letting you guys know, you don't need a big splash workshop to have a crack. Well, that's winch plate pretty much welded off. It's got this uh, gusset along the top there. Eight mil gusset, 10 mil plate. And then these 10 mil plates triangulating the main mount from the chassis to the winch cradle. So nice and strong, all gusseted up. This is the front view, little infill triangle there, welded all the way along the bottom and the top stun. You can see I had to do 100 mil stitches because I kept blowing my fuse, but that's uh, nice and gusseted it off. Here at uh, Patrol Customs we take our products very seriously. As you can see here, that's the aerial mount we've got the bloody plumbing level on it. Nice and plumb. Probably about the only thing that's going to be straight on the Saturday series. Well, that's pretty much done and it's just stopped raining so it's perfect time to go wheel and have the job's done. Um, sit here, what we've done here, the new winch plate, welded onto the old one at the bottom there. Mated all this stuff back in at the top here, and I've also changed this top hoop. Stood the uprights up a little bit, and um, yeah, it actually looks pretty good. Hope it looks good on the car. It's got to pull this little dent out over here, but um, pretty much all the welding and fabrication is done. Right, the boys have left the Arvo and um, Hoodie's currently drying in the background. Tomorrow we're going to get back into the bar work. So, just I thought I made a couple of modifications to the bar. Jesse's made some really good ones. He's done all the hard work. Um, we're going to run the winch actually on the front plate. He's strengthened all the front of so This is Sooty's original bar, mind you. Put a bigger hoop at the front here. I've just cut off the old um, light tabs. Now, these little mounts here, they were on the original bar. I've just, I'm just going to put those in a place. One's actually quite bent, so I'm just trying to get these straight just by using the old eye. There, yeah, I've got a little bit to go, but I'm going to weld those on now. Get all the bar ready, because tomorrow we're going to wrap to coat all this black. And can you imagine black bar work on that? I can. It's going to look red off. Ooh-ha! That, folks. Go on, go close, go on, go right up there. Have a squeeze of that. It's not bad from back here actually. If you look back from here, it's way better. <laughs> 
Well, I've got to say, this is going to be one of the hardest worked front bars in Australia. The punishment that this thing has copped is second to none. And today, we're going to give it a brand new coat and wrap it and bring this bar back to life. Now, it's had <laughs> quite a life, there's no doubt about it, but by the you know, give me about 20, 25 minutes. This bar will be looking absolutely brand new. Well, how good's this? The rear bar's all done. The snorkel, even did the cross member. That's pretty cool. Just everything, even the flares are all done. That's really cool. That's gonna look really good on that gray. And the bar, well, that's just a work of art. I mean, this is a really old bar that's seen a lot of punishment. And look at it now. You'd never know that's been off-road. If you look in the right light, you'll still see a couple of dents, which I kind of like in the bar, but very, very fresh looking. So the next step now is Flares are gonna go onto the vehicle. Some of the bar work can go on now, and um, can't wait to see what it looks like. Well, I've just arrived at Donnelly Engineering. I've been on the phone to Corey this week, and he's got a lot better news for me. Apparently, Sooty's engine is looking absolutely mint, so I thought I'd take you behind the scenes to see how the progress is going. Hey, mate. Hey, Sean, how's it going, mate? Good, good, good. I'd love to say I recognize his motor, but I really don't. It's got six cylinders, so it's a Toyota one. <laughs> Uh, what's the go here, mate? Oh, we've been working away. The boys have all been hard at work. We've done a fair bit to it. We've bought it, we've honed it. We've got the 1HZ post 98 block for it. Yeah, exactly right. So that's the cool thing about this is um, obviously my 1HDT um, block had some cracks last time we saw it. Um, we actually, you guys sourced a 1HZ block post 1998, which is the tougher of the, the 1HZ blocks. Same block as the 1HDT. That's correct. Yep, exactly the same. The only thing we've got to modify is we've got to modify your sump to have the oil return. Okay, okay, because it's got a turbo, yep. obviously. Okay, awesome. And then there's a stack of shiny parts up here. Are they all for... They're all for your engine. Well, let's have a quick look at them, mate. This is too exciting. You guys are probably getting a pretty excited thing. And what are the plans for old Sooty Mark II? Well, we're going a little bit above and beyond with the engine rebuild. Corey's twisted my rubber arm to make sure this, this motor's going to be nice and tough to handle a lot of extra boost. So I'm thinking that I'm going to send the pump away, yep. um, injectors, got another turbo coming for this thing. Um, we're going to be running probably about 25 pound of boost. So obviously one of the things you'll, you'll find with 1HDTs, and I can speak from experience here, you run too much boost in those things and they do lift heads. So um, to compensate that, we'll move over here. What have we got here? We've got a new head gasket here. We've got steel uh, head gasket. Yeah, so basically we've got like a steel comedic head gasket that's well and truly going to take the boost slightly better. Yep. And to top that off, we've also got the ARP head studs. ARP head studs. So, so there's no lift in here. It's not going to lift, which is going to be great. We're going to make this really reliable, but at the same time, we're going to be chasing a little bit of power. So that's always very exciting when we're talking anything. Diesel power. You guys have got a lot of experience rebuilding a lot of motors of high horsepower applications. Um, so, mate, speaking of the head, though, have you got the head laying around? Yeah, let's go have a look. Well, mate, this is a work of art in its own right. What's, what have you guys done here? You've obviously done all the machining on this. So, we start from the start, we've stripped it, cleaned it, track tested it, pressure tested it, made sure it was all straight. We then went on and we surface grind the head. We reseat the valves and reset all your valve recessions to the correct protrusions. Yep. Um, we then go from there and we grind all the valves, which we then found with your valves they were all unevenly worn yeah. um, as they've done quite a few miles. So, And a lot of hard miles too, and a lot of bouncing. Those valves have uh, certainly, <laughs> certainly seen. So they went out the back door. We've got a brand new set of valves. Yep. Um, then from there, we set all your valve clearances on the back. We bolt the cam up and set each individual valve to the shim individually. Yep. Um, and now it's all laid out and ready for assembly with a new set of studs. Right, oh, so that's the, you're at the stage now where it can all start going back together. That's exciting, mate, that's exciting. I thought I'd just come and get a bit of an update on how uh, Sooty's engine's going. Looks like, you know, now, now for you guys, it's a matter of putting it back together. I'm gonna leave you guys do that. I've got a stack of work to do to get ready to accept the engine in old Sooty, like all the wiring and things like that. So yep. my best to get into that, mate. And next time I see you, hopefully, there'll be one complete, one HDT ready to send a bit of boost through it. Very exciting times. <laughs> we can make, good on ya. No worries, Sean. Sure it's a work of art, looks way too good for me. 
Now that Sooty's all wrapped and coated, it's starting to look really good on the exterior. So I thought I'd do a little bit of work on the inside of Soot. Now it's all apart is a great time to use a little bit of this. It's called Dynamat. Let me show you what I've done. So as you can see inside here, I've actually done a fair bit of Dynamatting. Now Dynamat is a sound deadening. So while the interior is stripped out of this vehicle and the dash is out and everything like that, it's the perfect time to go that little extra effort. I always wish I did it in the old Sooty Mark 1, but sort of never got around to it. Um, it works really, really well. It does take a fair bit of time to do, but it's very simple. It's just painstaking when you're cutting all little pieces out to get up here behind the dash. So what you'll actually see behind, if you come with me, just have a quick look under here. I've put, this is the factory uh, rubber matting that goes on, on the firewall of most vehicles, but up behind that, you can't quite see, is Dynamat. And it goes right up to the top here. If you look underneath the top here, you can see the Dynamat goes right to the top of the firewall here. So you basically just have to cut out little pieces and roll them on. You get a little roller like this, and um, you can use the back of a screwdriver as well. Anything just to basically roll it on like that, and um, it pushes down, makes a nice bond with the um, panel and um, the good news as well you don't get water in between the dynamat and the panel so if you do go through a bunch of water crossings um, it's not going to fill up full of water up in between the dynamat Better. I think just about everyone knew that what sort of shape the rear bar in Sooty was. Now you've got to understand that originally we got this second hand for about 200 bucks off Gumtree and needed some work back then. Let's face it, over the last sort of 100,000 plus kilometres, a few Cape York runs has not got any better. Um, unfortunately it's cracked all the mounts, so now when you, the bar is, well it's basically not really hanging on, it's just, there's, I don't even know, there's probably just a bit of mud that's holding that back to Sooty here. So on the new build, I decided to install, install a brand new rear bar. No point trying to fix that one. I wanted to go for something that was a, a lot better departure angle, a lot sleeker, um, and this is what I found. This one here is the Cruiser Company. They do a really neat rear bar, and I fitted this one up just so it's it's just looking good. It's starting to give me a bit of motivation to put some other aftermarket accessories onto the vehicle right now. Um, of course, I've got a, a swing away uh, rear tire uh, mount here. I've also got twin jerrys as well, which I'll probably use on some of the bigger trips, but maybe not so much on the local ones. Um, that's all installed. Plus, have a look at this. I want to show you this. I'm pretty excited by it because I'm keeping this as a wagon, as you well know, and I wanted to make sure that I suppose I use the wagon to its full potential. When I saw these, these are by the Cruiser Company as well, gull wings for the back here. Have a look at that. They're just so neat. Um, I installed these ones myself and it was quite easy to do, but you can imagine what, if I have like a little false wall behind here and a little shelf, I'd be able to have like an air compressor or my 12 volt setup so I can easily just reach in here. It's such a handy way to maximize the usable space in your wagon. I love this mod, really, really cool. Obviously on both sides as well. So I'm not supposed to go nuts on the mods at the moment. I want to get it driving first, but sometimes I just get a little bit carried away. So we're up to the wiring stage of this project, which to be honest, I've been putting off for some time, mainly because it freaks me out. There's nothing worse than seeing a bunch of wires. Have a look in the engine bay here. You'll see what's going on with Sooty at the moment. Now, the big problem is that I need a diesel wiring loom for the new build. It, obviously, the, the, uh, the new body is a petrol, so we can't really use that loom, or you'd have to modify it quite extensively. So the easiest way to do it is to grab a diesel loom. But unfortunately, Sooty's loom, just like the rest of Sooty, has seen a lot of abuse right around the country. It's got mud where it shouldn't have mud. Um, it's, been, it's been attacked a lot as well. A lot of people have um, tapped into the harness for different accessories. And the result is that I can't really trust this wiring loom. Um, this is the petrol wiring loom that came out of the other body. This is in really good condition, but like I said, it is a petrol one. So I was able to source another 1HDT diesel 80 series wiring loom from a bloke down at Coffs Harbour. Damon, big thanks, mate. And um, so that's what we're working on over here. And when I say we, <laughs> that's right, I've called in the cavalry. A couple of good mates. We've got um, the guys down here from Ipswich City Auto Electrical. So Ben and Rob, the boys are hard at work right now. Um, what we're basically doing is bush proofing this harness right here. So this is the good 1HDT harness. The boys are bush proofing it and 
you know, if I can convince them to stay around a little bit longer, they might even help me chuck it back in the vehicle. Because once the wiring loom goes back into the vehicle, that is probably one of the biggest hurdles of the job, I reckon, to get that in. Because that's the bit I, you know, to be honest, it's way above my pay grade. There's no doubt about it. But I was really worried about this letting the, the whole vehicle build down. Because if the wiring loom wasn't up to scratch, I'd be chasing my tail from problem after problem. So you may as well get the experts in to do their job. And then hopefully, Sorty will be 100% bushproof. So we're just going to go through the new loom that uh, that Shawno got. We're going to try and make sure that we have no differences, make sure that we're not going to run into any dramas when we fit it into the new vehicle. Um, we're just going through and just tidying it up. We're going to bushproof it. We're going to take out anything that's been added. Um, it all looks pretty good. So we'll uh, we'll get it in the car and we'll get it uh, see if we can get it hooked up. getting pretty serious. Bob's just getting a battery hooked up. Look at that, there's a noise. There's a noise, we're getting a battery hooked up. We want to see to make sure that the wiring loom is, all, you know, no fire's gonna break out, all that sort of stuff. But mainly just to make sure that it's all right. The boys are just double checking their stuff. And um, I'm excited because this is the first time 12 volts has been actually hooked up to Sooty. That's a big step forward. Looking pretty good actually. I thought we'd have more dramas in this, but we're going all right. There we go. Nice to stole the switch out of Sooty because that works. That's the best bit of having a second vehicle over here. I'll tell you what is really handy. These boys know their stuff and they're going through not just installing it all in. That's what I'll do, just leave it at that. And when a problem surfaces, then I'll try and fix the problem. They're going through, checking everything right now, making sure everything on Sooty's work. So when it comes time to putting the motor in and stuff like that, we already know that everything is on point. Tell you what, pretty stoked right now. Well, I, I can't thank you boys enough. Thank you so much. Now, today we've actually achieved a heck of a lot. This is a bit of the project, I suppose, that was giving me the most anxiety, just knowing what was involved with the wiring. I am so glad I called on you boys to come help me. I mean, without these two fellas, I'll tell you what, it'd be another few months before sort of even, you know, got a spanner spun on it because all the hard bits have been done now. The, the wiring loom is in, and more so, these boys have tested everything. Now, one thing we learnt today that I didn't know is that Toyota is very different through the different year models. So just because Sooty's a, one, a 1991 1HDT, this wiring loom was out of a 93, which I assume would have been exactly the same. They're not, are they? No, they're not. So luckily these boys have got the know-how and uh, we put it all together and they've tested everything. Everything works. So what's left now, boys? Just put, put it together. In. Put, put the motor in and put the dash in, with the interior in, all the, the easier bits. Just plug and play now, just bolt parts on. Start putting it together. Big old Meccano set. Well, Rob, thanks very no much, worries, mate. Man, no worries, mate. legend, brother. All right, now I've got to do the next bit. <laughs> Fingers crossed, boys. You get the, <laughs> keep, keep the phone handy. I might, might not be in touch. Well, I hope you guys can see this smile because this is pure stoke. I'm so happy with how Sooty's come along. It's really progressed a lot further than I thought and, and relatively quickly as well. Um, I really wanted to keep this build to be done under my shed with a few mates and that's what sort of has transpired. I mean, you know, the guys from Raptor come over, Damien and Was, they came over and, you know, without those guys, we couldn't have got it looking this good. And I'll tell you what, it's looking really, really sharp. I'm really happy with the color of it. Uh, the prep work was key because we want to make sure this, this vehicle's going to get used, it's going to get used pretty hard. So we wanted to make sure that Raptor was down properly and that's why Damien himself came over to give me a hand. So that's all come together really nice. Um, since then, of course, we put the rear bar 
on. Um, we've put the gull wings in there. They look fantastic. And today, I mean, today was a huge milestone. I don't think, we, I, even I fully appreciate what's happened today because today's taken the project to the realms of where I can see myself driving it. Warren Loom is in, so that means that I am so dangerously close to putting that motor in turn of the key and drive and sort of on its own steam. That's how close I can sort of see. There's a lot of work to go, don't get me wrong, but at the moment the engine is being rebuilt right as we speak. In a couple of weeks, I'll have that back here. I'll be able to slap that back in with the gearbox. Should really be plug and play after that and it won't be long before I'm turning the key and shooting some soot out the side. I can't wait to see that. Now, thank you so much for watching these videos. Um, it, you know, it turns out these, these build videos have been a big hit, so I want to continue the build series on Sooty, and more importantly, I want you guys to comment, because we're getting dangerously close to being able to put a lot of aftermarket accessories, um, little ideas. I've had all sorts of ideas be put in the comments that I'm going to use on the build, so you guys are instrumental in this build, so keep those comments coming. Um, I want to know what mods I should do next on the build, because it's getting dangerously close where I'm thinking about aftermarket market accessories let us know what what products I should run what things you'd like to see on sooty um, and I'll, I'll go through those and hopefully I'll get some great ideas out of that um, I've already got a stack um, reduction gears was mentioned a heck of a lot last time safe to say there's a set of reduction gears sitting on the shelf inside so as soon as I rebuild that transfer those gears are going in so don't tell Jocko and Graham if you can do, do us a favor there but um, thanks again guys for tuning in. Um, usually now would be the time where I'd go and raid that beer fridge and uh, put all the tools away and stuff like that. But not tonight, I'm too excited. I'm gonna start putting the dash together and start you know, spinning a few spanners into the night because I want this build to come together so I can be driving out in the tracks. Anyway, I'll see you next time on YouTube.